that question often, um, you know, will blended learning serve students of all ranges? And, and one thing we've found is that the teacher in the room still is the most critical part of the blended learning classroom, so or of the blended learning class. So we treat the students in a blended learning class the same way we would treat them in a traditional class. Our goal is to give them those same supports they would get in a traditional class. In fact, though, they often would have more time in which to address those needs. Um, you've both spoken about the self-assessments or the frequent assessments, those, those checkpoints, right, where students can catch themselves or the teacher can catch them. And I think that's one of the beauties of the blended learning is that, again, with that rethink of how you're delivering a class, um, we've been able to put in those assessments. So whether it's just a paper quiz or a paper assessment, or whether it's an online assessment where the students can do the assessment themselves, get immediate feedback, you know, those are all those blended materials or technology-based materials that tell the student, do you get it? Do you need help? The teacher sees the results. They can then intervene with the student, whether it was an online quiz or just a paper assessment, or whether it's um, two students talking through a concept and a teacher coming by and interacting with the students. So those are all the types of assessments that can happen. Um, we also often get the question, you know, if a student needs a lot of support, will they get that support within a blended learning classroom? What if they don't learn well from videos? That sort of, that sort of question. And those are all valid questions because our students learn in many different ways. Um, but my, my answer to that really is, it's not meant to be an online video-based course. The students are meant to learn in many different ways, simulations, videos being some of those methods, but also that classroom interaction. So the teacher is still there, and it is very important still in terms of creating those opportunities for interaction with other students, but also for having that conversation with the student, did you, did you get it? Okay, let's go through it again, let's talk through it you know, reteaching it in a different way. Referring a student to a video so maybe they can work through it a little more slowly or a little more quickly, things like that, but really using all the tools to their advantage, um, as well as helping the students navigate, maybe breaking things down into smaller steps, taking the outline for one class and saying, I want you to be done this in the next 10 minutes. I want you to be done this next step in the next 15 minutes. So all those tactics are still important. I was thinking it's not so much, I think, the kind of student as I think, um, I think that blended courses, at least in our context, um, call upon um, certain skills. And some students will have those and some will have them in, you know, to a lesser degree. Um, and in particular, thinking back to something that Heather said about making sure the student understands the path between all those different components that it can make up a blended course. Um, I think that's one of the biggest challenges for students. It's actually, in, in our context, I think it's time management. It's If you're in multiple blended courses and they're all multi-component, then if you're weak at time management, you're gonna find it very challenging.